Dragons and Unicorns present Making a Crown Base. You'll need recycled baby wipes, PVA glue, gallery glass, melamine coated board approximately 26 by 18 inches or 66 by 46 centimeters, a polystyrene hat form, marking pens, lining paper, paint brushes, paper cutting scissors and a tea plate. Hi everybody, welcome back to Dragons and Unicorns Cosplay. Uh, what we're going to do today, having made our lovely head, we're going to make a crown. This is the pattern that I'm going to use and it's made by a wonderful lady called Lynn McMasters. I actually got this off of eBay, um, other sale sites are obviously available and I love it. It's the pattern, the I go to pattern. As you can see, ground fits quite nicely at an angle or nice and straight if you want it. Okay, it's a little bit small for me, I didn't make it for me. So I'm going to use this pattern, thank you Lynn McMasters, and I've cut out the pattern piece that I want. I keep all of my patterns in a folder, put all the pieces in, all the instructions, whatever I need. Okay. It's easy, it's simple, mark the outside of the folder as to what's in it, and you've always got what you need. So I found my pattern piece. I don't particularly enjoy cutting from pattern pieces. So what I've done is picked up my roll of lining paper. Yep. This is wallpaper lining paper. It's a good strong quality. You can go for the thinner stuff or if you prefer you can use brown paper. But I like to use my patterns over and over again so I tend to cut pieces out from the pattern and this is what I've done. Now you may be able to see that I've actually extended the pattern by two inches. The reason I've done that is because when this is finished it's going to have a spiked effect. So in order to have the spiked effect I need the wider pattern. So I ex extended it and put the size on the ends here. So I'm going to take my nice little head and approximately because more paper lining paper does tend to be a bit unwieldy but I'm going to line them up inside and out clip them together with a couple of clips You can use hair grips, you can use bulldog clips, you can use anything you want. But make sure that your lines do line up properly. Otherwise, when you come to make the icing, it's not going to fit. So we've got that lined up perfectly. Put another clip on. Don't put them on the bottom because I don't want it to stick into the hat, into the head. So now we've got our basic shape and I know that when that's finished it will fit 
Yep, it's a little bit big. But if you make it slightly bigger, you can always cut a little bit more off. So I'm going to put that away. And I cut a piece of my wallpaper, laid it on my board. my original pattern onto the paper and made sure that I transferred all my lines and I put a fold in the centre so I know exactly where the stone's front is. So what I'm going to do now is make the base of the crown. Lots of people would suggest using buckram. You can use that if you prefer to work with buckram, that's not a problem. Other people will go for a heavy duty interfacing and stick it together. Yep, that's fine, whatever you want to use. My favourite thing to use baby wipes. Dried, washed and dried baby wipes. As you can see, these have been in the washing machine. They're great because they stretch, they tear, so that when you're making an edge and you stick them down, because they're nice and fluffy here, it means that you don't get a definite line down something. And you don't want definite lines when you're making um, crowns, hats, whatever. So I've got my board here. This board is an old shelf out of a, um, our old kitchen and it's just one of the cupboard shelves. It's a nice size, I can work on it and it's great. Of course, being me, I also have my cup of tea can't do without at least a dozen of those a day and I buy PVA glue as you can see by the gallon I use a lot of this stuff in all my costumes pour it into a an old carton an old ice cream carton and then I'm going to add a little bit of water I don't want to add too much water, I usually tend to just cover. I don't use measured amounts. I do it by eye, I do it by feel, I've done it for so many years now. So I'm just going to mix the two together. With an old paintbrush. I use cheap paintbrushes. Why use expensive ones, provided you're using black bristles. You can see any bristles that come out. And you really don't need to use a great deal of quality in a brush when you're doing this sort of, this sort of thing. Because you end up forgetting to put the lid on or um, put them on the side ready to wash and then you forget to wash them. I've done it so many times as you can imagine. So we've got that mixed up. That's about the right consistency to be frank. I, it's a little bit lumpy but it'll smooth off. Then what I'm going to do is I know that this shelf is the size that I need for that pattern piece. So what I'm going to do now is start just literally painting on the PVA glue. PVA glue I've used for years and years. Um, it's nice and simple, but I also have a secret ingredient that I will tell you about in another video. So what I'm going to do is paint up my board 
paint as close to the edges as you can get without spilling it everywhere. I have got a cover on my table. And once you've painted the whole thing, you can start applying the full pieces of baby white. So I'm just going to push that onto the corner and straighten it out. And for a change, I'm going to be quiet here and just show you what I'm doing. Hopefully you can see. At this stage you are going to get lumps and bumps appear. Because it's the very first layer, I'm never very fussy about that. I try and pull as many of the lines out as I possibly can. If it means stretching the baby wipe out of shape, it doesn't matter. It's your first layer. Do your best. So I'll just carry on with this. And when you put your next line of sheets on, try not to overlap if you can. Avoid it. And straighten it out as best you can. And then go over again. Stray hair. Just get rid of it. That's why I use the black brushes so I can see that. As you can see, I've now got one layer. All of the wet wipes are laying that way, so now I'm going to come back and lay another layer across that so that it actually sits nicely. Paint up, make sure that what you've already done is wet enough to take the next layer. Okay, so what we've done now is put two layers of the baby wipes onto the board and now I'm going to leave it overnight and let it dry. Okay, so we'll be back tomorrow. And we're back for the next day. So as you can see, the board has dried. All of the wet wipes are now glued down and we're ready to start for the next phase. Now, what I'm going to do, because I want this for somebody else, I'm going to put the template that I made onto the surface, get it lined up, and make sure it's fairly square, although it doesn't have to be 100% perfect, and using a good marker pen. I'm using red but you can use whatever colour you wish. I'm going to draw around the edge and I know that the amount of fold over that I want on the crown is here and here. So I'm going to mark the other side. Again, you don't have to be 100% accurate on this because as you'll see later on, I need to actually change the shape of it anyway. But the basic shape is going to be there. Again, marking the line here where the old fold is going to be and this will save me from wasting all of this in the middle as I make the extra layers on. There we go. All marked up 
and I can draw a straight line on there in a minute. What I'm going to use today is my secret ingredient. It's gallery glass. It comes from the States and I was first introduced to this on a certain um, shopping channel and I bought it, started using it. Then I had to make Steve's helmet for um, the Lord of the Rings third in war armour and I discovered that this gives me a great deal of flexibility so that the curves would be good but it would still stand up to a lot of um, hardware. So as you can see this crown I've made with the gallery glass exactly the same way as I'm making this this template here. You can see how flexible it is but you can also see it will fit quite happily on your head and it becomes as soft as you need it to be but it never becomes so soft that it melts and that's what you want something that will stand up to a fair bit of bashing and still spring back into shape as you can see it'll still spring back quite happily okay so with the gallery glass I pour it into an old paint tray or you can use the lid of an old um, or even the base of an old ice cream pot whatever whatever makes you feel comfortable and then exactly as I did when I used the PVA glue I'm simply going to paint this on to the existing surface and add my um, my radiating baby wipes. I'll do a couple and then we'll skip on to the next stage. Apply the gallery glass fairly thickly but not overly thick. You want it to stick but you don't want it to be gloopy. So you need to rub it in quite well. And what I tend to do is to alternate my layers between PVA and gallery glass. This gives the amount of flexibility that you need, but the PVA also gives you a certain amount of shine. So paint it on and then place tissue and then use the gallery glass brush just to ease the shape and the stretch that you're looking for. You do want to make sure that the edges have sealed down properly so it's always a good idea just to go around the edge again just the width of, one width of the brush so that not only does it seal onto the existing baby wipes but it also makes sure that when it dries the edge is as thick or as binding as you need it to be. So you then obviously just repeat all the way round until you reach the other end. So I'll be back in a minute when I've reached the other end. Okay, so I've just finished spreading the entire sheets over the shape and hopefully you can see the lines. I've actually taken a photo of this so that you'll be able to see it better and I'll put that in here next and then what you can do is 
any excess of the gallery glass that you've got, you can either put back in the bottle or spread it down over all of the joins. The reason I do this, the joins do tend to be a bit lumpy and bumpy. So I tend to find that adding a little more gallery glass means that the edges will be glued together better and then when they're flexing the flex doesn't split which would be a complete disaster obviously. So this sort of thing does take patience, it doesn't take a couple of minutes um, it takes days to actually do this and you have to leave it to dry. Um, the average is about 20, 24 hours, sometimes it will take longer, sometimes it doesn't take quite so long. It rather depends on weather conditions. Um, I've found if it's very damp the, the gallery glass doesn't like to dry too easily. So, you know, if you've got to leave it another 24 hours, then leave it another 24 hours. Don't try and take it off of the, um, off of the base before you're sure the whole thing is together. And as you can see, I've used all of my gallery glass and now all I've got to use is some shampoo or some natural soap, pop in there, give it a good scrub scrubbing the brush at the same time and you can just throw it down down the sink so I've given the uh, the crown base a few days to dry I've got three layers on there and I've now double checked all the measurements and I looked for a, a shape that I wanted to make it from and I decided I'd go for this shape which is a four point but actually it's a little too Dutch in its shape so I've decided to go for a six point instead and what I'm going to do now is draw this onto the form that I'm using. So I know that although this is the wrong shape, it's the correct length. You can probably see all the red marks. I've got somebody else to fit it to my head. There we go, it's the correct size. So what I'm going to do now is transfer the correct size onto this template. So on the correct marks, I'm going to cut the line remark it using my centre onto the base and as you can see there's a little bit of a difference in the size here. Having marked all the lines that I need it's now time to remove this from the board. So starting in the corner and making sure that you don't actually have anything stuck underneath the board when it comes to the edges. Just gently ease it up and it will stick in places but you just need to be very patient and working your hand underneath it lift from the centre. This doesn't cause any distortion so don't worry. You can just see how that's coming off. Now at the edges 
it's a little bit more stuck down but I'm not going to worry about that because that edge is going to be wasted anyway. When it comes to the top, sorry about squeaky, you need to be a little more careful. And the reason I'm taking this off at this stage is because the crown needs, when it's folded over, to actually uh, have extra layers added to it. But I don't want to have all that extra on there because otherwise it makes the crown very, very heavy. And as you can see, it's come off nice and clean. We have all our measurements and all our markings we need. And now we can put it back on the board and I've got all my my six points measured on here. Now you can use whatever measurements you want and create any shape of crown that you want. If you wanted, for instance, to do something like the Henry II crown from the film Beckett, then you can change the shape just like this. So using my head form that I made I just want to double check that this is going to sit nicely at the back and it is it's exactly where I want it to be So I'm now going to transfer these lines, remembering to line the centre points up and then using my ruler I'm just going to draw a line here using the crown form as a guide for those lines. And what I've decided to go for is the six point. As you can see I've marked it as the correct shape. I've also measured it as to how I need to, to get the shape and get an even six points on the crown. So what I'm going to do now is just transfer these markings onto the crown. But first of all, I'll tell you how I figured that out. I've taken my measuring tape and measured from one line around to the other which is 19 and a half inches so I'll write that down in the waste piece and then measure the outside edge which works out at 34 and a half inches. And then what we need to do is to guide 19.5 and 34.5 by 6. And I've now worked out that 19.5 divided by 6 is 3.25 inches, 34.5 divided by 6 
is 5.75 inches. So I now need to mark those points all the way around the top. I've put together the correct size and ironed it because it got a little bit problematical because of the folds on it and I've now put it on the back of the head and that's exactly where I want it to be and it really is the right shape. The reason for that is because it has to sit well back on the side of the head so that um, we can put the gable front on this particular crown but if you want it taller or wider then you can adjust as necessary. So what I'm going to do now is use my ruler and use my tape measure and mark before I peel this off of the um, off of the board. I'm going to mark five and three quarter inches from the edge and I'll mark each point. And there we are, five and three quarter inches at the end. So that's brilliant very happy with that and I just need to mark the three and a quarter marks just in case I need to double check my lines. Now there's no need to worry when you're marking these as later on you'll see that what I do is paint the whole thing with white paint. So none of the lines and none of the marks will actually show. There we are. All done and dusted. And here's the crown I made for my granddaughter, just as a play thing. As you can see it's got a square top and all I did was counted the number of um, battlement pieces that I wanted and marked it on the top of the crown. Obviously this was a, a very much shorter, um, narrower base than this one but you can have whatever you want. Now I'm going to use my little plate because I know that the edge on this is really even. Cutting um, a template is fine, you can do that, it's not a problem, but what you've got to remember is to measure it so that you know it's perfectly round if you're making this shape. Now I'm going to just take my plate, put it face down, and place it so that it's between the two marks I've made. Holding it down, I then make the points and working all the way around, make those points. And then, when I've marked all of those, I can cut them out. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is take that off the board, sit down with my, um, my scissors and cut the shape that I want. Between marking this 
and actually cutting it out I suddenly realized I hadn't allowed for the fact that it's actually going on top of something quite thick and it's going on top of some black velvet so I've added a little more to the um, to the total length and remarked and checked and cut all my bits and pieces out that's the center and what I'm going to do with this is keep it because it will come in handy for other bits and pieces and as a base for other things which I'll show you later on so I've now cut that and as you can see I've remarked the line and I'm going to put those lines together because that's the correct size now you can see that I have an overlap I'm not going to worry too much about that but what I do need to do is just mark it on the outside and the inside so making sure that my lines are absolutely together I'm going to mark another line where I need to put the extra pieces on to stiffen it because as you can see it's a little bit floppy at the moment for a crown base. Now the reason I do this is because I'm going to use this overlap as part of the, the crown itself and eventually it, when it gets put together the overlap will sit there quite nicely so I need to mark that um, but I'm not going to cut the edge and the reason I'm not going to cut the edge is because I want to be absolutely certain that when it goes together it stays together you'll also notice when you take it off of the board that you have a nice smooth surface with the odd little bit in it and you also have the other surface which is quite rough and untidy so it's this side which will become the inside and that side which will become the outside um, it depends how much texture you actually want on your crown as to which side you decide to use and again that's entirely up to you so what I'm going to do now is add more of the, um, the layers as I did before and I'll do that in a moment and you'll be able to see in a couple of days just how much the crown has progressed. See you soon. As I said I would, I've added three extra layers to the inside of the crown and what I've also done is made sure that I've drawn the lines for the join. So I've taken that up and then I'm going to add a little bit more if I need to. Now what we've got here is the crown shape and as you can see I've outlined it with some red line so you, it's easier for you to see but if I turn it round you can see that I've got a little bit more substance to it here it's a little bit less flexible but it's still very soft at the ends here so what I'm going to do now is cut off my excess pieces of baby wipe and I'll speed this bit up so that you can see what I've done. Um. 
So here, as you can see, I've taken off the excess and we've got a nice straight line. So that's looking good. And now I'm going to keep my keep my um, my crown base onto the inside facing. Do whichever makes you most comfortable. Obviously, I'm right-handed. If you're left-handed, you're going to have to adapt to this. But uh, I tend to cut with the top side facing me, so that I've got a little extra purchase and a little bit more of a guide for my scissors. So I'm cutting the outside. Now as you can see, I've cut the shape and it's beginning to look a little more like a crown. I'm really pleased with this. It has to have lights, it has to have sparkle added to it. But uh, what we're going to do now is put the two pieces together. And this is why I used my overlap. I'm using the two lines that I've drawn to match these two up and then look, I'm just going to make sure that it fits fairly well. Yep, it's doing what I wanted it to do. It's nice and comfortable and it's beginning to look just like a crown. So what I need to do now is join the two, piece, the two pieces together and I'm going to use my PVA glue for this one. So I paint my PVA glue onto both edges. generous with the glue because you need this to stick together properly and remembering that the left and the right are going to stick on different sides so having done the inside of one piece we're going to do the outside at the next and then I'm going to place them together and line up my two lines okay. inside and out double check them push the pieces into place. Now you're going to get an overlap here that's going to be cut out. Don't worry too much about that because you'll trim that once this is dry. Now as you can see it's already beginning to stick together nicely but what I'm going to do to be absolutely certain that this stays in place I'm using a couple of hair clips. 
Now you can use pegs, you can use bulldog clips, um, you can even use the, um, the hair clips that are shaped like that and you've got a prong in the centre that you clip either side. I tend to find that though if you use those they will leave large marks. So that's why I use good old hair clips. And you don't want to use too many of them or you'll leave marks and you don't want those marks on your on your piece so it will slip around slightly and once you've clipped them together on the bottom like that you can see we've got the clips and they're all together sit it up like that and we've only got one room for one clip in the top so I'm going to put that clip on but because that top has got to be nice and sharp I'm just going to push it down but not push it all the way you may be able to see that I haven't pushed it all the way on I want it to sit like that so now that has to sit in a nice position on the table or on the on the floor on its board somewhere where it can dry naturally don't try and force this drying it won't be happy and you'll end up with an old wobbly crown so there we are we've got our shape we've got our base and once it's dry I can trim off these bits here and get the shape finished make it look good if these pieces this piece here I can see is beginning to come away so I can't quite show you that on the inside it's just beginning to come away here I'm not happy with that that's going to cause me problems later on even if I cover this in fabric which I may well do we're going to make a decision on that at a later stage so I'm just going to put another clip onto the crown so that you can see that will hold it in position and I think I will probably clip the other side as well purely because if you don't clip it you'll regret it so just open that up and that can go and sit either in sunshine or by a radiator but not slap bang close to the radiator if you're going to clear to dry it by a radiator then make sure the radiator is over here and you've got at least a foot between the radiator and the crown because otherwise it at this stage it will buckle and you don't want that look to start with okay we'll be back later on and i'll show you the next stage so we've reached the final stage today this has been sitting held together for a couple of days and now all I'm going to do is just finish the shaping. So we take the scissors and we follow the line around, turn it over and follow the line around again. Now you'll find that you can't get in quite so close that way round. So once you cut some of it off, you can then go in with the scissors on a better angle and finish your line properly and the last little bit will always be a little bit stubborn so you just need to come to the inside and trim it as best you can remember this is your base and so 
later on you can either paint it and decorate it with crystals the way I have here with this one obviously this one's a slightly different shape but it's the same base and this one I've covered with fabric it's got a little bit of padding on it because it needed to look luxurious and I've added some pearls and gold beads in a different decoration so you can decorate these crown bases however you want just going to double check that it actually fits so we'll put that on there and sit it in the center and there we are we've got a nice fit onto the headpiece there we go and you're ready to cover it and design whatever you'd like you can use this base for any shape it really doesn't matter and we will produce another video to show you how to produce different shapes of crown base the crown base is finished to see the other videos in the crown series please subscribe to our channel and remember to like and share thanks for watching everyone blessings and light to you all big dragon and unicorn hugs